This mukbang is brought to you by Raycon Earbuds. Raycon Earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market. Raycons are great for working from home, working out, which I've been doing a little bit more of during this quarantine. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. So click the link in the description below and use code buyraycon.com slash Timothy to get 15% off your order. All right? So check that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What's up, y'all? Uh, so as you know, I'm trying to do more of these uh, mukbangs because uh, it's the only thing making money on my channel right now. So uh, welcome, bro. What are you doing more of? Mukbangs. Mukbangs. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, so, if you've seen, have you seen them on YouTube? These eating videos. Uh -huh. So, well, okay. So they're 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 spelled mukbang, M U K. Okay. Oh. Bang. Okay. All right. But they're pronounced mukbang. It's Korean. Bong. It's a Korean thing, and it means uh, eating show. Basically. Okay. So that's why they popped off these eating okay. videos. Okay. So if y'all don't know who this pretty white boy is sitting next to me, do you remember that skinny white boy? <sighs> That hit on Zendaya with uh, with Agni and the dirty fingernails. Spit that water out so I can get your number, please. He got Agni and his fingernails dirty. Uh, <laughs> dude, my fingernails are clean, man. I'm good. Oh. It's a little bit right there. No, you good? But, like, it's fine. No, the rest they of look them are good. Fine. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Well, I needed that. So this right here, stand-up comedian, funny dude. I met him on the set of Wild and Out. We did a couple seasons together back when you were just a wee youngin. Yeah, man. man. What was that? Six years? Five years ago? Five years ago. Five I mean. years ago. I was like, "What you want to eat, dog?" And he was like. How about Thai food? And I was like, all right, cool. Okay, so I've never uh, ordered from this Thai food place before. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I tasted a little bit of it. Okay. It doesn't... I've had better Thai food. Okay. okay. I'm going to okay. tell you that right now. That's fair. But I'm putting you on to new shit because, you know, when I asked you what kind of Thai food you wanted, you said... You said chicken fried rice and yeah. some dumplings. Yeah, I ordered some dumplings to, to keep it in your in your safe zone. But they're, they're fried though. I usually get the, uh, the the soft ones. Oh, you all healthy they're just and buff and shit. There again. Ah, ah, there. Okay, go ahead. So here's what we got. All right. So this shit right here, it's called a uh, gapao. All right. Okay. It's beef. Pow. It's beef. Okay. Um, when my mom does it, it's usually ground beef. It tastes mm, way better. Okay. Um, but it's a little bit spicy. Uh, here's some fried dumplings. This shit right here is called pot see you. It's pot like uh, basically just that. noodles and veggies and meat. That's beef again. Mm -hmm. um, I've had it better. For That's sure. dry beef stroganoff, basically. Oh uh, sure. Okay. 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 Um, and I've never actually had beef stroganoff. Really? Is that a white thing? Oh yeah, it's it's with the casseroles. Okay. Okay. It's okay. in the same family. I, if you told me to describe beef stroganoff before this, I would have never. I would have drawn a blank. It's literally this with like some creamy sauce on it and some mushrooms, which I'm not. Oh, that sounds alright. It's it's fine. It's okay. very white. Okay. Very. And this right here. Uh, you're a healthy boy, so uh -huh. this this might be good for you. It's it's chicken. Okay. It's ground up chicken with some little spices and uh, and tings in it. Oh, that's that's chicken right there. Yeah, it's called it's called lab. It's spelled L A R B like lard, lab. but it's pronounced lab. Right. Lab. So you basically just eat a little bit of that, a little bit of the, you know, you get some veggies if you want, throw it in there. Okay. Um, and then uh, this right here is some soup. What is? That? There's mushrooms in there though. So it's a. Come on. My bad. I didn't know it was that full. So this is a, a coconut based soup. It's kind of okay. spicy, kind of sweet. It's called tomka. Tomka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I'll, I'll scoop, I'll scoop you a little bit, and then we just gonna dive right in, dog, and we chop it up for a little bit. Okay, okay. Um, and you know, it's like I haven't seen you in a long time, man. It's good to see you. You I know? know, man. You got a house and everything. I do. It's beautiful. You came up, dude. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been working on it, man. You know. It's you you like it though? You like this the settled down life? I do. I really, really do. Not gonna lie. Uh, I mean, look, you're you're like I'm I'm damn near almost five years older. No, than you. <laughs> really? Oh, really? Okay, okay. I mean, gotcha. I'm That's a little, the game we're playing. I'm a little older than you, right? Okay. When I when I was your, I feel like when I was your age. Oh um, fuck, that sounds so old. It sure does. When I was your age, man. Um, I was having such a good time, not in the settled down life, you know. Mm -hmm. But now that I am in the settled down life, now that I am my age, it's lit. You're domestic, man. I'm, it looks good. I'm totally I domestic. Uh, I I am like 
completely domesticated. I can't lie, I'm, I'm a little jealous of the domesticated life. I recently have been getting the, the feeling that I, I would like to settle down. Well, that was a crazy thing to say for a 24 year old. No, Nobody believes it, you. It's not too crazy, but you know, I mean, everybody that's older than... How you feel about that? It's good. Is there ginger in this? Yeah. Mm, okay. I just like, I'm such not, such a not experimental mm -hmm. eater that whenever I taste anything new, mm -hmm. my brain instantly goes, ugh. But, I tried a couple times, it's fine. I'm gonna let you process. I'm fucking with this so far. Okay, good. Uh, oh, and of course I got you a Thai iced tea. Oh man, thank you. I, I do like Thai iced tea, that's fine. Um, that's a safe bet. Oh yeah, and I was gonna say, you, you, uh, you, you just an in love ass dude too. Mm-hmm. I look like a fuckboy though. Yeah, and that's, that's my true. biggest problem. And I've had the phase. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fun. But I'm at a point in my life where I'm very focused on my career, mm -hmm. and I'm not about that party lifestyle anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think it'd be nice just to find someone to settle down with, stay grounded, that you can, you know, rely on and relax with and feel supported by. And it's pretty have cool. Some cool. Sex some, from time to time. It's pretty sweet, man. Okay, so has Zendaya replied to your DM? Absolutely yet? not. <laughs> Is she like 23? If I'm 24, I think she's 23, because that was a huge debacle on the wild now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was touching this minor's face. Yeah, yeah. But she was 18, though. And I had just turned 19. Oh, it no. was mine. I just remember Hitman going, She's 18! He's 19! Yeah. Don't be touching all her like that! She's too young! She's 18! He's 19! You have any idea how many times I've seen that fucking clip sent to me? It's embarrassing. Um, did you watch Euphoria? Some of it. I heard it was good. I think it's a really good show, but to me it just seems like a bunch of writers got in a room and everyone took like their craziest high school story mm. and put it in one big thing. It was almost a bit too much. Mm. Like when 14 year olds are like, got one girl in a room, they're like, you've never sucked a dick before. I'm mm. like, who, who is saying this? A little unrealistic. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit aggressive. I feel it. I, I don't that. doubt that those people and experiences are out there, but I, that was my experience. Is, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah, I think I was like 17 before someone touched my penis. I, I was, I was definitely me and my uh, freshman girlfriend. We were going down on each other pretty consistently. Oh, okay. Yeah, right before church. What? Yeah. You aren't going to church. I was. You're not religious. I was pretty heavy into it at one point. What? Re what religion? Uh, Protestant Christian. So not Catholic, but the, the cooler ones. When did you stop? Um, I think at, at one point I, uh, I got older and not that I, I still feel like I have a pretty strong, like, I feel like me and God are homies. Uh -huh. Um, just in terms of all the, uh, rules that come with man-made religion mm -hmm. and like the, you know, the specific, you gotta do this on certain days and, yeah. and that whole aspect of it. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm off that. Yeah. I've been off that for a while. Cause I just, a lot of things just weren't making sense to me as I got older, Yeah, but I was still like, me and God, we're cool. Uh, That's the most important part. I feel blessed, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. we talk. Do you believe in like energy and like manifestation or do you believe God kind of controls what your life path is gonna be? Uh, I feel like it's a little of both, right? I look at it like it's this. It's gotta be, right? Yeah, I look at it like this, and this is how I've always kind of said it. Um, I feel like, let's say, let's say we were to look at what I know I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. as an island, right? So it's there. It's meant for me to get there. Yeah. Whether I put in the work to get there or not is on me, right? Uh, so this island is my destiny. Yeah. But my journey, I gotta put in the work and I gotta make sure I stay on the journey to get there. That makes sense. You feel me? And there's gotta be a million different alternative routes for you to get there. You just mm -hmm. gotta choose. Mm -hmm. That's scary to think about. Cause you always wonder like, damn, is this gonna be the one decision that throws me off track? Exactly, or it could it could be the decision that um, made it take me way longer to get mm -hmm. there, you know what I'm saying? But it's still there. It's a butterfly effect, man. Right. One little thing can affect everything. How about you? Are you religious? You grew up religious at all? Not at all, man. Mm. My parents never took me to church. I went a handful of times as a kid with like friends. Like I would stay over Saturday night and like, well, if you stay over, you have to go to the church with us in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I would do that, pick up little things here and there. But yeah, the same. The older I got, the more I was like, I don't think any one religion has just nailed it. Hmm. I, I'm kind of in the same boat. I believe there's a, a path that we're s supposed to get to. It might not happen. Mm -hmm. But the manifestation shit has really become more of, of a belief of mine. Just because I've wished for so many things to happen mm -hmm. randomly. And they happen. Mm -hmm. Out of like 
<laughs> I, I've dated people who I never <laughs> thought I would have dated ever. Yeah, I, I've I've become friends with and had uh, career experiences that I, you know, as a kid would have dreamed about, never would have thought they were possible, mm -hmm. and then they happen. Sometimes you wish they wouldn't have. Yeah. Um, so it starts to make you believe like shit. Literally anything can happen. So be careful what you wish. For. I've always believed that, dog. We, you ever do interviews and they ask you, um, like, are you surprised that this is your career now and this is what you're mm -hmm. doing? And whenever they ask me that, I'm like, no. No, that's what I wanted to do. That's always what I wanted to do. What else? What else would you do if you had to quit entertainment in general? What would you do? I, I mean, I always feel like I would just end up doing behind the scenes shit. Um, no, like you had to be out of the industry completely. Mm -hmm. How you like that laugh? I fuck with it. It's it's got like a bitter isn't the right word, but like a, a tangy taste. Yeah, it's like a, it's like sour, spicy. Yeah, yeah, bro. I like it. That's my shit. When I was um from seventh to eighth grade, when I was trying to lose like my baby fat, mm -hmm. I was eating shit like this like every day from my mom's restaurant. And your boy came back to eighth grade, sexy, really small little pecs. Really? I can lost my little long highs I mean, right it's here. just pure protein, right? Yeah. Damn. Well, sometimes you eat it with some sticky rice, but, uh... I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was the question? Uh, what would you be doing oh, if you well, couldn't be in entertainment? Like, you gotta be out of the industry. Yeah. Doesn't have to be necessarily be, like, a blue-collar job. Oh, well, you know you what? You see what I mean. Now, now that my life has kind of changed into the food shit, mm -hmm. I probably would have opened up a restaurant. Really? Followed in my parents' footsteps, maybe. Do you enjoy cooking, or you just prefer hey. food? No, 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 that's a lie. I used to never cook until the quarantine hit. Mm -hmm. And once the quarantine hit, um, I started, uh, you know, HelloFresh and shit like that? Yeah. Yeah, they send you little bags. Mm -hmm. um, usually, like, wifey would be cooking them up, and then and then I started doing them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of fun. Not bad. Do you cook? Not even a little bit. <laughs> I learned how to make one dish during quarantine. So this shit is straight. Uh, if you like this, I like it. Okay, if you like this dog, there is so many better places that really? do, do it better. What was the name of this one? Patsy U. Patsy U. Okay. Right. Patsy U. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah gotcha. Yeah. All right. Um, I learned how to make um, it's such a white trash meal. Um, I would take Bob Evans ground uh, sausage, okay, the spicy kind, because you want some flavor in it. Okay. And as a white person, I don't know how to season anything. <laughs> that is a fact, not just a stereotype. Right. I'm like, just salt and pepper. Okay. So I'll take the spicy sausage, mm -hmm. and then I would boil some noodles. Okay. And I would put the sausage over the noodles, and then I would just drizzle butter, and then put salt on top of it, and then mix it all up together. Sometimes I would do it, same sausage, and just do ramen, just regular ramen noodles, and then mix that in with the I see you. I wasn't listening Nasty. to nothing you said because Nasty. I was trying to get this egg. It's okay, that's for the viewers. <laughs> Hit me up, change your life. But what the fuck is that called? Uh, man, it ain't got no name to it. It's just called I have sausage and ramen noodles is all is in the fridge. It's nothing wrong with that. I'm all about finessing shit like that, dog. What am I'm I? Lazy man. I mean, you know what, dog? You gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. You live in single boy life, right? Are you single right now? Mm-hmm. Okay. You live in single boy life. Aspiring actor, comedian. Mm -hmm. You buffing shit now. Thanks, man. When I met you, you were so scrawny, dog. I know. You and I really thought I was muscular at the time. <laughs> I really thought I was like, bro, I should have all cut off shirts. If you go back and look at early wild, you were wearing tank tops every episode. Every episode, <laughs> I thought I had like cuts, man. <laughs> I was putting up like maybe one plate each on bench, thinking <laughs> I was shit. Um, but I know, I know, for cooking, a lot of people find it therapeutic. Mm -hmm. But it feels like a chore to me. Here's the chore. The cleanup is, is the most annoying part. I don't even mind that. <laughs> I'm like, like I was telling you earlier, I eat like for survival. I'm never like, oh, I really want this. I'm never craving anything. Right, right, right. So when I'm hungry, I'm usually like, I'm hungry right now. You don't crave anything? Rarely. Damn, that's so weird Rarely. to me. Rarely. Like yeah. Thai food sounded good today. So when I suggested it, I was like, man, I haven't had that in a while. I'll yeah. mix it up. But for me... I'm like, when I'm hungry, I want to eat right now. I can't be like, cool, let me start cooking because in 30 minutes I'm going to be hungry. I feel you. By the time I start, I'm like, fuck, this is taking forever. That's what I'm saying, but you don't like Postmate shit you're craving? Okay, okay, check this out. Since you moved from Ohio to LA, what is a restaurant you really enjoy going to? Hmm. I really don't go out that much. Hmm. Um... Hmm, that's tough because I don't eat anything like specifically LA. I guess like <laughs> the Krabby Crab 
in uh, Studio City. What's it's that? just a cra- crab leg restaurant. Oh, oh, yeah, it's not specific to LA That's at cool. all. It's everywhere. I didn't even know you liked. I, I mean, I didn't need to be specific to LA. I was just asking you in general. I mean, that was it. One of my, uh, I flew my grandpa out here for Christmas this year. Mm-hmm. He had never been here. hadn't been on a plane in like twenty years. Mm-hmm. So when he gets out here a couple of days before, I was like, Grandpa, you're in LA. You can have. Any food you want. We can go to like Mastro's, mm-hmm. we can go to Gladstone's and, and Malibu, like wherever you want to go. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker wanted to go to Burbank Olive Garden. I was like, there's one 10 minutes from your house in Ohio. He's like, it's a safe bet. I know I'll like it. I understand where you get it from. Yeah, I'm, we're not adventurous people. Interesting. I know, I know. Mm. But at, at least you like crab legs. I do. Seafood's, seafood's solid. Oh, you like seafood? Look, just not sushi. Okay, interesting. It's it's the rice, it's the raw fish. I just I'm not experimental with it. Man. I mean, hey, you know what? To each his own. At least you've tried it. That's true. That's true. Do you have a favorite dish that you enjoy cooking now? They're like, I, I could whip this up for myself. That I like cooking? Mm-hmm. They're like, I'll, I'll make this for me. It'd be worth it. I'm gonna reach over you for this. Try some of that. It's I. Right. It's okay. I mean, well, since you've never had this before, it's gonna be a. Uh, a, a good, ex- you know, like everything has been a little f- flavor break your like cooch virginity situation, <laughs> right? Yeah. But uh, if you like this, there's definitely better places that do this. Okay, let's see. You said <laughs> your mom makes a version of this. I mean, yeah, all all Thai food, like all Thai spots, would just do like I mean, all this shit's I okay. in terms of the Thai food I've had. Mm. Um, how do you like that? <laughs> it's a little spicy, but but in a good way. I like the spice. Okay, good. Okay, good. Mm. Is there a city or a specific state they're like they have the best food? Because I know when we did the oh, the Wild and Out tour on MTV <laughs> Two, we went to Memphis. We had barbecue, yeah, and that shit still stands as the best, best barbecue I've ever had. had. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of the best food I've ever had, right? I mean, look, I, I love the food in, in LA. I feel like LA has some of the best. Uh, uh, just there's, there's such a variety of different shit you can get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the best sushi I've ever had, strangely enough was in Houston. What? Houston, Texas. Me and my boy were supposed to shoot an episode of our food show that we do, and the fucking crawfish festival got canceled. Mm. So we asked Instagram where we should go eat, and this girl suggested this sushi place called... (sighs) Damn, I'm so mad. Well, anyway, this girl suggested this sushi place. She said, kind of bougie if you guys don't mind paying some, some money. We're like... Blit, we're in a bougie mood, we ain't got shit to do, let's go. Mm-hmm. Fucking best sushi space, fucking best sushi spot I've ever been to. We went to two days in a row. Really? Yeah. Houston, you said? Houston, bro. Houston, Texas, baby. H. You love it? I loved it, dog. Dude, I've been one time <laughs> for a show. Yeah. And I get there, It's it was downtown next to the uh, next to the Astro Stadium, mm-hmm. which I thought was like a decent part of town. <laughs> and I get to the venue early to do like some mic check and everything. And the show doesn't start for like another hour and a half, really. Mm-hmm. But I'm only there for like the day, so I'm like, oh, we'll grab some food down the street. Three blocks away, I walk to get some tacos. And as I'm walking back, I got like a taco in each hand. Okay. And there's this dude walking towards me coming from the stadium. He's yeah. kind of dressed like, like a construction worker. Okay. You know what I mean? Like very plain colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's walking towards me. And when he gets about hmm, maybe like, like 10 feet away from me, dude just pulls out a gun. And was like, oh. give me them tacos. Wasn't robbing me. He thought I was robbing him. With your tacos? Yes. He pulls out his gun and was like, oh, my bad, man. He's like, I thought you, this is a bad part of town. I was like, uh, it, it's cool, man. Uh, but you had tacos in your hand? Yes. <laughs> it was very confusing. I've never had a gun pulled on me before. He thought you were going to empty the shells. Tim, thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, I hear 9-11's calling real quick. We'll be right back. <laughs> Oh, Damn. Man. I would go back and do it again. I miss stand up so fucking much. Damn. Oh, okay. Well, you, since you love doing stand up, uh, then I would say that my favorite city to eat is, is New York. Uh, because. Eclectic. Uh, yeah, eclectic. And, uh, you know, so there's so many different spots you can eat out there. And, um. Fans always want to go to dinner with you. <laughs> do, they, do they know that story? No, they don't. They know that they watched the vlog. It was so long ago. So one time, me, me and Matt. What were we shooting? I was out there for some other shit, and then you- I was doing TRL. You were doing TRL. That's right. And uh, maybe I was doing basic to bougie. That sounds right. Anyways, me and him were going, we like, we like, let's, let's go get some fucking bougie steak, right? So, we're walking to, what restaurant was it? 
Uh, it was some really nice steak restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like a bougie steak spot. I run into some fans on the street. They wanted to take pictures. It was all good. Cool. And then dude starts walking with us. <laughs> and which I'm like, which is a little weird, but I'm like, I'm going to be nice, right? So we're walking, talking to this guy. I'm, I'm trying to be nice. And uh, we're, we're, just, we're just chatting a little bit, small talk. And then we're about to walk into the restaurant. And the guy's like, well, can, can we like, can we, can we join you for dinner? And I was like... I don't even remember what I said. All right, so he asked, uh, he asked where y'all going on, on the walk. Okay. He's still walking with us. And you were like, oh, we're just going to get something to eat right now. And he was like, where at? And we were like, oh, just this, this, this real nice steak place up here we got a reservation for. And he was like, ah, cool, cool, cool. Can we come with y'all? And he asked to come and you were like, uh, it's like a reservation thing. And he was like, no, it's cool. Just ask him to pull up like two more chairs. And then you said, hey, man. That's a really weird thing to ask. <laughs> and they were like, oh, all right, uh, well, appreciate it. I mean, it was like a dick thing to say, but it was 100% necessary. No. no. I, I had to. You had to, man. And then they act, they act like you're the asshole because I know. they're acting weird. But here's the thing. I guarantee you, whether it's me or it's him, retell that story to anybody, mm-hmm. and everyone's going to look at you and be like, what the fuck were you thinking? Yeah, man, you think it's... If you saw any of your favorite celebrity outside, <laughs> what the fuck makes you think they want to include you in their whole day? And not not only celebrities, if you see, if you run into any person you don't know, and they're even about to, people you know sometimes, <laughs> right, 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 invade on the day. Oh, completely. If you run into two homies that are going on a man date mm-hmm. at a nice restaurant, mm-hmm. how can you just? Inject yourself in there like that. It's rude. <sighs> Have some common courtesy. Uh, so what happened with uh, with TRL? Anyways, why don't you? Uh, oh, what oh, okay, TMZ. Let's tell you. <laughs> so I loved working with MTV. Mm-hmm. Put that out there right now. Well, now they were great to me. And so when they came uh, to me for TRL, sorry. After Wild well, Now, I did uh, the challenge. Oh, uh, you did it. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how was that? I'll tell you. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a season called Champs vs. Stars. Okay. I was a star, which was flattering. Uh-huh. It was the most random group of people who have ever been on TV mm-hmm. ever. Okay. It was like a crackhead just like flipped through a book of like MTV catalogs and was uh, like, that one, that one, that one. It was me, Terrell Owens, uh, Lil Romeo... Justina from Wild Now. Mm-hmm. It was super, super random. Uh-huh. So they well, all well, MTV will throw Justina in whatever they can. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she's very talented, <laughs> yeah, as, yeah, as yeah. they should. I love Justina. And you uh, guys smashed. Nope. <laughs> Definitely not. Put that out there right now. No, we did not. No, no, I'm just never. No. I'm just saying that so I can uh, put it in the title. Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> Clickbait. <laughs> Clickbait. All right. So they offer me this stupid <laughs> amount of money to go on the challenge, yeah, right? Yeah. But the thing was, you got that stupid amount of money just for doing the show. It didn't matter if you win it or okay. if you're the first person to go home. Okay. So I, of course, said no. I want nothing to do with reality television. I think it's so stupid. I don't mm. watch any of it except for Love Island UK, greatest <laughs> show ever made. Wifey loves it. L- UK version? Um, both. Uh, the American one is like, eh. I've been asked to do the American version twice. Not going to do it. Right. It's not as funny. Anyways, um, so I hate reality television, so I was like, no, no, no. And they were like, well, here, we'll, we'll give you like an overall deal with okay. MTV as well. So they just sweeten the pot a ton. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll go do it. It's weird to be like a comedian or an actor to say this, but like I'm pretty much an introvert. Like if I go to a big party or whatever, I do not want to be center of attention. I don't, I don't want to talk to anybody I don't know. You want to know something? Hmm. Same. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's like once I click with somebody, it's fine. I'm open. But right. in like a public setting, no desire to be center of attention. Well, why do you think you and me were always like on the side talking so much during Wild Out? That's very, very true. You know what I'm saying? It was like very with true. all the energy in the room, I kind of just like, I like to just chill. So on the show, I'm like, I'm not saying nothing. I'm not like coming up with strategies or anything. <laughs> I'm not cracking jokes, nothing. <laughs> so of course, the challenge team members and stuff are being like, oh, Matt's the worst comedian ever. <laughs> He doesn't say anything funny ever. And I'm like, well, whatever. I'm, I'm getting paid to be here just to compete. Yeah. And uh, I have them coming up to me in between, like, 
cutaway breaks or whatever, change your mic packs, and they're coming over being like, you know, you, should, you really you really should talk more, you'll get more screen time. And I'm like, I don't want screen time. I don't yeah. want anyone to even know that I did this show. <laughs> so they're egging it on so much. Yeah. So when it came to the first elimination challenge, I knew that I was gonna be paid the same amount, and I was like, I hate this yeah. so much. So I actually went and told the dude who I was going against, God, I hope this isn't like breaking a contract or anything. I told the dude, I was like, hey, I want to go home. Yeah. Please beat me in this challenge. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. know what it was even gonna be yet, but I was like, just and he was a fucking big dude. I was even, I was much smaller than this even at the time. Mm -hmm. So like in most physical challenges, he should have beat me. But we ended up playing this game that was so fun, to, <laughs> and I was so good at it. Right. We had to stand on these circle platforms. <laughs> and they started to spin yeah. pretty fast. You had to like find your balance in it. You got to keep up with the speed. And you had to throw these dodgeballs into these three rings okay. behind the dude you're competing against. And he's throwing throw three rings behind mm. you. And, and can, you, can you block him while you're you, going? You can block him, yeah. yes. But I was able to get the footwork down really fast. Oh, you love And I, I played baseball growing up. Oh, so God. like I was nailing it. I was winning so much, <laughs> oh, so yeah. much to the point where I was like, oh, shit. Like I, I gotta chill, or he's or he's gonna beat, or I'm gonna I'm gonna win. And he kept falling down. Like, and when you fall down, you, you I think you could fall down three times, and, and then, then you're you out. Lose. And he had already fallen down twice, Come and on. I was up by like two points. Idiot. So I fall down on purpose, and I was just I was just out. There was some time limit rule or whatever. Okay. So I fall down, and he has like four balls left to make two shots. Mm -hmm. Makes the first one, and I was like, yes, silently. Yeah. And then he misses the rest of the three, and I end up winning. So you won? I win, because I was having so much fun in God it. damn it. And then my team is like, Matt is a valuable asset. Oh, we gotta keep him fuck. forever. And I ended up staying until the semifinals. No way! Yeah. Wow. I had to stay the rest of the season. Damn. So when that got done, of course now MTV is like, well, we saw a lot of your, we saw a lot of you on this show, so we're bringing back TRL. Um, uh, for any young fans on here, TRL was a very popular show in late '90s, early 2000s. Is that what it was? Why are you asking me for? Yeah, I don't know. know. Uh, you're only five years older. No, no, I, I, I love TRL. Carson Daly was my shit. Um, first, wait. You sure? You sure you're good? You, you sure you want to talk about this? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Cool. Yeah, the T TRL, I have no problem shit on. Okay. okay, okay. Um, <laughs> I just didn't want to make the challenge mad. Right. Because um, there's some avid fans out there. It, it is a cool show. It's just not for me. I mean, I was super into real world and road rules and the challenges and all that shit growing up, too. If you're into it, it's cool. And, like, the physical competitions are fun to watch. They're fun to compete in. I'm just not a mm -hmm. reality star at all. I was in. You can get pigeonholed into being that. Yeah. No, completely. Oh, here, here's a funny story. Um, when I was a little kid, I was obsessed with the real world, right? Mm -hmm. I had been watching since, like, season... Mm -hmm. Four, I think. Okay. And um, before I wanted to be like a movie star and shit, I was like, I want to be on Real World. You know, mm -hmm. like I just I really want to be like one of the first like Asian dudes on. I think I don't even know if there's been an Asian dude on Real World to be honest. But uh, good question. So I was like, I'm gonna do it. So started doing the YouTube shit. You know, started going on meetings with different people, different productions, whatever, whatever. And I had a meeting with Buna Murray just to kind of like little, you know, like that's the production company behind all these MTV reality shows. And um, but at this point, I, I had already told myself I don't want to do reality TV. Mm -hmm. And um, so I never submitted for Real, real World. And oh. I was like, hey, guys. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you know what's funny? When I was little, I really wanted to be on Real World. And they were both, and like the people I was on the meeting with, they were like, you totally would have got casted on Real World. <laughs> they were like, 100% well, you, you would have got casted. No! And then they told me this story where um, they were like, you know what's funny? Kesha was supposed to be on the Real World. And then a week before the season started that she got casted for, mm -hmm. she was like, you know what, guys? Um, never mind. I'm going to go try and be like a pop star instead. <laughs> and she did. And she did. Isn't that crazy? For a hot minute. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you were shitting on TRL. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a bad idea. That's all. Hold on. I'm chewing my food. Yeah, I, yeah, like, chew, chew, chew. <laughs> I see you're enjoying your food. Dude, I'm starving. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to murder all of this. You can take... Whatever you want home, too. You mean it? I mean it, dog. Because I have nothing but, like, <laughs> microwavable meals in my entire refrigerator. This shit will go hard in the microwave, bro. Really? Yeah. You want to try some dessert? What did you get for dessert, man? So, there's this dessert. And I'm only going to have the dessert because I'm taking all of this home. I'm yes. I'm still so hungry. What did you get? There's a dessert. Uh, it's called mango sticky rice. It looks disgusting. I'm not going to lie. Okay. What is that? Okay, so, this is rice. Mm -hmm. This is mango. Okay. And then, then you get a little of this uh, coconut. Coconut jizz cream. You pour that on top. Alright? Okay. Now here's what you're gonna do. Okay. I'll get you a fresh fork. Thanks, man. 
What the? F is the rice already flavored or is it just sticky? It's a, it's a, there's a, there's a subtle flavor in there. Okay, now here's what you're gonna do, alright? Just take a little piece of mango, mm -hmm. get a little bit of this rice, a little okay. bit of that cream, and then you're just gonna eat it in uh, one, one little bite. Okay, okay. Let me do a fresh pork. You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Tim got silverware money now. Damn. Mm -hmm. Oh, two, two forks? Mm -hmm. okay. There's forks all over the table. Damn. You know how much plastic silverware I got in my house? <laughs> right, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna drown it out with the mango. Let's try see try that on for size, dog. Let's see, baby. Try that out. Let me Let's see. see. Tell, me, tell Let's me what see. you <laughs> <laughs> get, a, get a flake. Get a chew. Let that marinate in there. Hmm. How you feel about that? Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's really good. Yeah. Here's my confusion with a lot of Asian food. Mm -hmm. The rice is just like an unnecessary filler to me. I understand that. Like, I, the coconut sauce with just the mango would be spectacular. The rice is fine. It doesn't take anything away. But what is that? Why is there always added rice? Everybody does that, bro. Look. It's like bread. Tortillas. You're right. You're right. Noodles. I didn't think of it like it's that. All, it's like the fucking noodles and you're stroking off. You're right. <laughs> it's like the white like do it you're saying. <laughs> Everybody does. I never know. thought about it like Indians that. Because those are like one big solid thing yeah. usually. Indians have naan. I've never had naan. Oh, no. It's just it's, it's a crispy tortilla. Interesting. I never thought of it like that. See? Mm, the more you know. Put, put that little shit up top. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was good, man. I'm gonna try a little bit more. Do it. Do it. I'm dropping hot ramen recipes. He's cooking stroking off and he's stroking off. Bro, <sighs> quarantine has <laughs> been just rude to my dick. Being your dick real. like crazy. I'm so sick of porn up. Like, I don't want anything to do with it. Go to. Um, I've seen all of it. XNXX. Oh, bro. I'm already ahead of you. <laughs> bro, I started going to Reddit and Twitter. Like, oh, just to find the, 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 the little. Yeah, uh, you gotta find the hidden uh, gems. Yeah. Cause yeah. there's. I, I know we're wrapping up, but like, there's such different lanes for porn. Like, porn up feels like. Like a, like an event. Like you want to get dressed up. No, 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 it I feels agree. like it's a production. Pornhub is always a production. Yeah. I'm, sometimes you want some back alley shit. I no look all the time. I want some oh, back alley yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. When it when the when it's too clear, I'm like man. Yeah. Like I don't want you to be like. I don't want you to know your lines. I want it to be no. spontaneous. And, and he, he, here's. Here's 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 a tip, bro. Hmm. I like to if you look up shit like I've had enough of your tip at this point. <laughs> if you look up if you really want to find some homemade shit, you gotta look up like uh like uh um because if you look up like my ex girlfriend, uh, the, the porn guys like the production team, yeah, they're onto that shit. Right? Of course, it's all productions mm -hmm. of like my 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 ex, my wife, whatever, whatever. Yeah. You gotta look it up in Spanish. Look up what? Look up Minovia, <laughs> and it's a bunch of dudes <laughs> that have filmed their girlfriends in some Latin <laughs> country. <laughs> but is it all Spanish women and all Spanish guys then? Not all the time, because you know how they're always mislabeling shit. Like it'll be an Asian girl, and they'll be oh. like, "Oh, sexy Latina," or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then you feel racist trying to figure it out. Like, no, that's Filipino, maybe? No, and here's what's fucked up, bro. I've, and I've talked about this before. I actually have this written in my, um, if I was to ever do stand-up, <laughs> notepad, where it's like, I'm, I, like, wokeness had, has low-key messed up my porn viewing mm. abilities. Because I'll be, like, trying to search up a BBW, and I'm like... This girl's not even fat. <laughs> Why do they have her labeled as BBW? She's she's not even fat. That's thick. That's not yeah, fat. Dude. Wow. <laughs> what are you working on now? Um, just finished filming a movie, uh, a thriller that was my first lead. Um, so I'm Sick. very excited about that. Mm -hmm. And coming up, and I was telling you about this a little bit earlier. As soon as we're allowed to start filming again in the United States, uh, I've got a movie I'm doing with Jamie Kennedy. Dope. Coming out from Malibu's Most Wanted and Scream and all that. I'm a Jamie Kennedy fan. Dude, me too, man. Yeah. Not enough people give him credit. He's actually a really good actor. Do you remember his prank show? You know, I've actually never seen him. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's from the 90s. That was my shit, dog. It's called the Jamie Kennedy Experiment. I've heard of it. Oh, I've just never seen it. It's so funny. It's fun. This one definitely gives him an opportunity. He's he's more of the straight man in this. He's, oh, okay. he's got a big dramatic role, so I'm excited to do it with him. It could be a really uh, cool career course change for him. Very cool, man. Well, shit, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you're still getting money out here in these Thanks, streets. Man. Until stand up starts back up, but you still have not been to a show. You know how crazy that is. I've seen you live. When? 
That's what I thought. No, no. That's exactly what In New what York, I, I know exactly what you say. You get up on stage and you say, I know I know what you're thinking. I look like one of those fine fuck boys. No, I haven't said that in like three or four years. It, it was three or four oh years ago. Oh my god. <laughs> that doesn't count then. It was when you were skinny. I'm ge- oh, okay. Then yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah. yeah. I'm gearing up to do my, uh, my hour special, my first hour special. I'll be filming that next year. Okay. Probably in Los Angeles. I might do New York or Atlanta. We'll I'll see. pull up if it's in LA, dog. I appreciate that. I appreciate the local support. Any, <laughs> anything for me. Oh, actually, and you you always fucking hit me up like the day of for shit. A lot of shows are day of, Tim. Ugh, I can't. I'm married. I can't do spontaneous shit anymore, dog. She, she definitely wants to do spontaneous shit. No, she would gladly like be in the house all fucking the time. Really? She, don't know, she never wants to be taken out for like surprise date night? Not really. Yeah, you gotta keep her, man. Yeah, I know. That's low maintenance. I'm the one that's like, hey, let's let's go let's go get some dinner. <laughs> She's just like, oh, do I have to get dressed? Well, when the world stops ending, come out to another show. Bring her out. Let me know a week ahead of time. It's lit. I'm there. A week? That's like a month in LA time, <laughs> three, man. Three days ahead of okay, time. Okay, right? okay, I can do that. Okay, okay. Um, and and I'll go. And not only that, I know that it's a two drink minimum. I it will is. buy four drinks. You swear? And I'll send a drink up to you. Man, you know I don't really drink. You gotta get me fucked up. Yeah. Take advantage of me. And I'm, well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> the royal penis is clean, your highness. Thank you, king shit.